When you want to make selections in a free form sort of way, you can use the lasso tools. There's actually several lasso tools in Photoshop and we're going to explore them now. Well, I have the lasso here and actually if I click and hold, I can see there's three different lasso tools. The lasso, the polygonal lasso, and the magnetic lasso. And they're great for doing free form or a free hand selection. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, lasso tool here. And what the lasso tool lets me do is to just make a, sh a shape any way I want. And it's just, it's just free form. I can do control D or select to deselect that, if that information. And with the polygonal lasso, that's going to give me polygon shape. So I'm clicking, and as I click, I'm creating a shape. Each click is called a fastening point, and I can make very unusual shapes in here, but they're very geometric in a way because it's these straight lines. And when I come back to where I started, I'm going to close the lasso, and you can see that there is a circle in that icon, and that tells me it's going to close the shape. And now it's actually a selection. So up to that point, it wasn't a selection until I closed it. Let's go ahead and deselect that. Now the magnetic lasso is like the polygon, but it needs some, some contrast to really hook onto. And you can see how there's these fastening points that are showing up. I'm not actually clicking anything. I'm just moving my mouse around and it's making its own fastening points. And this tool works best when you have some contrast, like the balloon in the sky. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. You can see that circle tells me it closes it, and now it's an actual lasso. Let's go ahead and try these out on some shapes here. I'm going to hold control and space and zoom in a little bit, just pan with my space bar, and that lets me pan or get the hand tool. I'm going to use the magnetic lasso because what I like about the magnetic lasso is it's free form, but it's recognizing the contrast. And so as I'm dragging around, it's actually guessing where I want to go because it's seeing contrast. It's seeing differences in color and also differences in the lightness darkness between that yellow balloon. Now as I get in, I may want to zoom in and have a little extra effect. And in this scenario, it's really important to have that keyboard shortcut for zooming in, which is control space. And then I can just drag, just click until I get where I want to be or maybe pull down. And the reason why it's important to have a keyboard shortcut is because you can't really move your mouse to change, because if I try to go and change it, you can see how the magnetic lasso is coming with me. The good news, though, is if I accidentally move that around, I can just press backspace several times, use my space bar here to pan through. And so you can press the backspace or even the delete key or the undo command to remove some of these fastening points. Also, if it doesn't quite snap where you want to go, like this one just didn't quite go in the corner I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and use a backspace. And you can always click. So that was me clicking right manually there. And I can always click where I want to place that fastening point and use and basically work with the magnetic tool. And again, it's, it's trying to go extra places. So I'm just going to do a little more clicking. It kind of reminds me of walking a dog. You're taking the dog on the leash and you're kind of letting the dog go where it wants to go, but every once in a while you are bringing it back. I'm going to go ahead and do control space plus um, the alt, and that lets me get a little bit larger. Use a space bar to move down, and now I can move back up. And this part's pretty easy to select with the lasso. Just come back, and the key, of course, is to get all the way to the end. And you can either circle back, and you get that circle that lets you close it, or if you didn't quite get to the, the edge and you have um, still an open point, you can double click. Now, one thing you should be aware of is that this lasso has actually been saved as a step. So what you've done here is a step, and if you accidentally um, messed up or you want to try it again, you can always go back a step in here. Now, I want to show you something about the, how the regular lasso works. Because a lot of times when you're making a selection, you don't get it exactly perfect. I can see some edges in here. And one of the things I can do is go back to my lasso tool, and I can add to it. If I hold down the shift key, I'm going to be adding pixels to the selection. In fact, there is that plus sign. And I'm just going to come around 
and swoop around and and perfect it adds right in there it, again I want to add some pixels to my image area I'm just going to kind of trace around and then swoop around that I could also have used the polygonal lasso here in fact maybe I'll try that here I'll just use my shift command actually I think I'll use my alt I'm going to try to get rid of some of that smooth that out so use my alt command and make a nice clean shape and just double click to close it up and then I'm use my, my space bar to pan through here I go back to we could either use either one of these you could even use the magnetic lasso but let's just try using the polygonal lasso here alt to erase these and then come back and double click now I want to show you something that sometimes happens I'm going to triple click so didn't quite triple click for me let's try this again and then to go ahead and make a more dramatic cut so I have my alt here and I'm making a dramatic cut and I'm going to triple click and sometimes this happens is that you, you're trying to double click but you end up clicking three times because you click and then you double click and, and it feels like you've lost everything and to make matters worse you've got this lasso that's sort of sticking out there and it, it just gets, it can be a little tricky but whenever that happens don't, don't worry too much because you have your history panel and you can go back in history to the point of where you wanted to be so you just restore it to wherever you wanted your last selection to be and that'll be fine and that makes work with the lasso just a lot more user friendly and I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and I just want you to know that you've got these lasso tools as a great way to create some free form selections or to refine selections that you've made to make them a little bit more custom to what you wanted